This is tutorial 4-3 in GIS Tutorial Workbook 3. In this tutorial, we're going to be exploring different creation tools. And we're going to start by making sure that our editing options match what the book wants. So the first thing we're going to do is start up our editing session. And we're going to make sure ORTA is the selected geo database. Then we're going to go into our editor options. And now when we've been using our uh, measuring tools for creating lines, we would do the control L and it would we'd put, be able to put like 800 in and it would go to feet. We're going to be changing the type of direction we're using now in the direction units. Um, we're going to go from polar to quadrant bearing and direction units to degrees, minutes, and seconds. And make sure that this display angle using is zero. After this tutorial, you might want to go in and change it back to what you're used to. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to start creating a train station uh, right around here. And this is a survey point. So what they want us to do is select our buildings and pavings, choose polygon. They want us to put our first point right here. Then just stretch it out a little bit because you don't want to be right over the vertex. Because if you are, it'll ask you to delete it. So uh, just click somewhere over here. And what we're going to do is directional length, or you can do the control G, whatever you prefer. And as you can see now, it's not just a number, but it has, you know, south, so something coordinates, and then west. So we're going to change it to south, or S, 67, 12. So I'm going to change that 5 to a 12. 47. So yours should look like that. And they want it 157.966. OK, and it placed a point right here. Now what they want us to do is they want us to remove our initial vertex, uh, because that's the surveying point, I guess. Um, that's where the, the person had his equipment and did a survey and was like, okay, that's where we want the first point. So what we're going to do is right click on that point and just delete it. And we still have our second one where we want the building to start. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use our parallel tool, which is in our feature construction toolbox up here and it's this guy right here and we're going to use the rail line as you can see now it's parallel with the the rail line and then you're just going to do control L that opens up our length and we want it 300 feet and then you just hit enter okay now you want to use the per the per perpendicular tool and you just click on uh, the rail line again as you can see it goes straight up you want to do control L once again and you only want it 50 feet now we could do the same tools over again to make it a perfect box but there's actually a cheap way of doing it and all you do is right click and square and finish so as if you're using a rectangle as a polygon that's a really easy way of finishing it now there's a year turn that has to be done and what they want us to do is create a smaller building offset by 40 feet from this corner now if you remember we did some tools where we could use offset with trace and everything but we're not going to do that what we're going to do is we're going to plot a point right here on this vertex we're going to use this tool again on the rail line, so it's going straight up. We're going to do Control L, 
and they want us to offset it by 40 feet, so we're going to put 40. And with that done now, we just do what we did in the first one and delete that vertex. And now we can start building our, our new building. So now we want to use this tool. And this one is going to be Control L 50. And then 20. And then we can do the square and finish. Now they want us to have us make a total of four of these, so we have to make three more. Now you could sit here and do that over and over again, or you could just copy and paste these. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have this selected. We're going to go up to editor. We're going to copy. And we're going to go up to editor again. We're going to paste. This will come up. You just make sure that it says buildings and paving polygons and then click OK. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but what it did was it placed another building right above the one we just made. So what they want us to do now is they want us to get this little, put our cursor right over Uh, first, you have to use your editing tool. Yeah, that's why it was snapping to things. You want to hover right over the little crosshair there. Press and hold the control button. And then click and drag that to right here on this corner. And when we move this building now, this crosshair that we have will move with it. And the reason we're going to do that is we know that there is 40 feet that separate this corner from this corner. So we're going to drag this until this dot is over this corner. Uh, so just watch and see. Okay. So now you could sit there and do that over again two more buildings, but there's actually another shortcut we can take. We can select these. Um, they're not selecting that way for some reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, open attribute, close that. They're now selected. Edit, edit copy, edit, paste, click OK. Control and move it down here. Then I just move it up here. And I just move two buildings instead of having to move just the one at a time. Now we're going to zoom in. We're going to use our measure tool just to make sure that it worked properly. So if we click here to here, it's 39.9999975 feet. It's pretty accurate. So this one is the same. The same. And the same. So it worked. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a some attribute changes. Because right now if you open it up, there's nothing really here. Now you could use the editor and type things in here normally. There's actually a quicker way of doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on buildings and paving. We're going down to select, selection, select all. And then we're going to click on the attribute buttons in the editor toolbox, which is this one right here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to click on buildings and polygon, or the buildings and paving polygon. And in description, we're going to type bus shelter. Now you're probably thinking, why am I naming it all bus shelter when that's actually the station? Um, it's going to be quicker just changing one of them rather than all of them. Uh, because we would do, here we have four that are bus shelters and then one station. It's easier just changing the one. So we're going to click on these. And as you can see, when you click on it, it flashes over here which one it co corresponds to. The first one is the, the station. So we just come in here, I like that, type in station, and we can close it now. Now if we open up our attribute table, they now have a description. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click on buildings and poly buildings and paving polygons over here in the create features window. We're going to go to properties. And what we're going to do here is we're going to give it a description before we actually make it. And this will show up in the attribute table. We're going to call this parking lot. And we're going to use the trace tool to make this one. So we're going to, first I'm just going to select, or clear all my selection. Make sure polygon is selected. Choose the trace tool. You can either choose it in the feature construction or up in the editor. It's available in both. Then you're going to click on the endpoint for this right here. And then you're just going to draw. And then just double click when you get to the end. Now if we open up the attribute table, as parking lot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to symbolize things so they all look different. So just go into properties, go to symbology, we're going to go to categories, unique values, and we're going to use description. Then you just add all values, uncheck this just so it doesn't show up in the the legend and they tell us to assign appropriate colors so I'm going to make bus shelters an orange color parking lots a gray color and the station black and click OK now as you can see the parking lot is hiding the bus shelter. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an advanced method in order to get them to show. So we're going to go back into our properties and down here we're going to click on advanced and you're going to go to symbol levels. And you just have to check this box right up here and now we can use things in here. What you're going to do is you're going to click on parking lot and bring it all the way to the bottom. And you just click OK. And basically what this is, this is a hierarchy. Um, bus shelters now has top priority, followed by station, followed by parking lot. So basically shelters, bus shelters will be placed on top of parking lot. And just click OK and now they're shown. And that's it for this tutorial.